Today we are painting up a, a dank hold Trogoth from Games Workshop for Age of Sigmar, and I have no idea what a dank hold is, and I really don't want to know. The important thing is that this is the last of my Goblin Gets Gloom Spite army, so this is the final piece, yay. So let's jump into it, and we are starting in the airbrush booth to put down a good solid base coat to make things easier. Starting off with some green colors because uh, we're going to be using green eventually. However, we actually are going to first lay down a layer of golden brown and we are putting that over the green. So the yellow is going to have a little bit of a green tinge to it and it's going to blend in nicely with our green that we are eventually going to apply. Two painting techniques we are going to be going over mainly in this video. The first is stippling with makeup brushes. This is the latest trendy way of painting. Uh, stippling is just a matter of putting a little bit of paint on your brush and just stabbing it at the miniature so you get a nice texture pattern. Using makeup brushes for this is actually a good idea because makeup brushes tend to be uh, thicker, uh, they're more dense. Doing stippling with a a very thin brush not only ruins the brush, but also as you stab down, the bristles tend to bend. Uh, with a thicker brush like this, you have a bit more backbone and the tips are flat. So you get a nice even pattern with your stipple. This is my first major project using this technique over a wide area on a miniature. And I will admit my results were a little bit soft if you want more texture, I would have probably should have skipped one of these highlight steps. So the contrast between the stippled layers is a, a bit more dramatic. And then the pattern that we are applying is going to be more dramatic. After finishing off with a little bit of a stipple of white here and there, also applied some uh, white just straight with a brush to highlight some cracks in the skin or little areas that I thought wanted, that I wanted a little bit more highlighting for. The other major technique we're going to be using throughout this video is glazing and starting off with the yellow areas that we just painted, giving that a glaze of yellow ink, which is just, it's a very thin ink we want to apply in a smooth layer. We don't want it pooling in the recesses. It's not a wash. And this is going to get a, give a little bit more color to our golden brown base coat and also a little bit more depth to our yellow skin. Now, a majority of our troll is not going to be yellow. It's actually going to be green, and we're going to transform it into green by using the glazes. So, much like layering, glazes are just very thin, transparent layers of paint slowly built up. The difference here is instead of going from darkest to lightest like I normally do, we're going from lightest to darkest. couple of things to keep in mind here. We're not going into from shades to highlights or vice versa. I'm actually doing a transition of colors on the troll here. So we're not really worried about shading and highlighting. What I'm trying to do is a transition of color, kind of like maybe you would see on an alligator or a normal animal. So you have a yellow underbelly and then that turns into a green color, maybe a darker green. So there's some transition of colors, makes things far more interesting.
Now because we are applying glazes over the yellow that we stippled, some of the pattern from the stippling is going to show through through the green. And that's the whole idea here is so we have the stipple pattern all done with one color and then we alter it, change the color of it by using glazes. Now as I said before, my stippling was a little bit too soft so we're going to lose some of that as we proceed through the layers of green here. So as we apply more and more green in certain areas, uh, the stippling is going to kind of disappear. Uh, as I said, I probably should have done my stippling a little bit more dramatic. But that is also why I'm applying some of the glazes with the stippling pattern to add a little bit more texture to the texture that we already applied to the skin. The goal here is as we move further away from the yellow belly, the colors are going to transform. We go from yellow, then it transforms into green, and as we get to the top of the shoulders and the areas where the mushrooms are really concentrated, it's going to turn into a dark blue. So we just proceed to apply glaze after glaze after glaze, and then we slowly get that transformation, and then theoretically we still have some of that texture pattern still showing through from the original yellow. Now this is very similar to my standard layering technique. Uh, the paint is about as thin as I normally layer with. The one thing we have to keep in mind is because we are applying dark colors over light colors, we have to have actually have to paint a little bit thinner or we have to use more transition colors because dark colors cover light colors uh, at a much greater intensity than the reverse. So you have to keep that in mind. You have to have your paint a little bit thinner or you have to use more colors at each step. So once we're done with the glazing layering for the main colors, we're actually not completely done with the technique. This is more how glazing is typically applied, just adding a little bit of subtle color here and there. For example, in the yellow and the transition between the yellow and green, I wanted a little bit more color there, make it a bit more interesting. So we add a little bit of tan, once again, very thin, a smooth layer. So just adds a little bit of color to that area. Also added a little bit of red here and there as well as on the tip of his nose. For the cracks in the skin, we are going with a very dark green mixture, glaze medium added, so we could clean up any boo-boos. And you're gonna see, I'm actually gonna change this later on once we get to the how do I fix this step. So I wanted to show you this way of darkening the cracks and then I'll explain why I changed it when I get to that point further in the video. On to the dreaded mushrooms, and this was the big pain in the butt in the project because this guy is covered in them. I first started painting them with a very light color and had a lot of contrast in them, but uh, that did not work too well for this project. By the way, that deleted footage is on my Patreon page, plug, in case you're interested. But I ended up going with a much darker color because uh, they ended up being just too intense and I started off with violet for the base color because all the colors I'm eventually going to use are going to be kind of in that tonal range. We're going to stick with blues and some red violets so using violet just as a undercoat for everything helped to simplify it. It also helped, helped keep the mushrooms a little bit more cohesive and dark.
the main problem I had with the mushrooms is there's just so many of them on the model and I don't want to just paint them all one color. I want to do a variety of colors. Actually, I really wanted every color in the rainbow on this guy to begin with, but it became, it was too much, essentially. I can't add every color in here and I couldn't decide on what colors to add. So I'm not covering every color in this portion here, but we did, I tried reds, I tried greens, uh, light blues, turquoise, uh, violets, red violets. Eventually, I decided to keep it mainly to violet, red violet, and turquoise because those colors were most similar to each other. Moving on to the club, and once again decided to experiment and practice with our makeup brush stippling technique. Very appropriate here for a stone to have a rough surface to it, so stippling is very ideal. I guess I should mention the whole reason for doing the stippling over the troll itself was to give the same uh, texture as the stone we're painting right now. I figure this guy is supposed to be, I assume, some sort of rock troll, so textured skin would be extremely appropriate for a rock troll. And then once again, going with our glazing technique, this time glazing in our shades and just using a finger to wipe off any excess. Good thing about painting stone is you can be a little bit rough with it, be a little bit sloppy because it's a rock and it has dirt on it. So you're allowed to be a little bit more sloppy when painting something like that. It makes it look more realistic. It's always good to visually tie one portion of a model into another portion, and this is a very good example of that. Want to use some blues on our stone club to tie it into the blues on the miniature himself, the mushrooms, and also we're eventually going to add a little bit of green to tie it into the skin tone.
my original plan for painting the mushrooms was to have them, them uh, start with the larger ones being violet, and then as they radiate out, the smaller ones transform into uh, blue and green or red or what have you, but that just wasn't working out. Instead, I decided to paint them based on the color of skin underneath. So the dark green uh, and the dark blue areas, that's where the purple's really intense. It works out and moves out into blue. And then on the yellow skin areas, I finally settled on a very light green color. Around this time, I also decided to change the color of some of the cracks in the skin. When I originally had lighter painter painted mushrooms, a contrast of the dark skin, cracks in the skin, worked well, but when I painted the darker mushrooms, the cracks just were kind of hidden. So I decided to go for a, a light color in the cracks, especially on the top as well, and hope they would like look, look kind of like cracked skin or you know, on an alligator or something like that. So I actually use yellow ochre and then also some light greens on a few areas. So it, it varies depending on exactly where it is. Originally, I had no plans in filling the gap on the neck. I thought it would go together just fine, but after looking at it, I realized I needed to putty it, which means I needed to repaint that area. And to disguise uh, the difference in the paint, because trying to match all the glazes we did is near impossible, decided to add some spots using Scurf Green and Glaze Medium. And after adding some around the neck area, I also added them in different areas of the model to kind of enhance the look of the original stippling that we lost. And then after that, once again, still trying to blend the mushrooms into the skin a bit more, went with some Vallejo model color red, just on the yellow areas and a little faint glaze around those mushrooms to uh, make them look more like they're erupting from the skin. There was a lot of last minute tweaking of colors just to try to make myself happy with the paint scheme I came up with. Uh, one example here is the royal purple, trying to darken the area around the mushrooms because eventually I realized the green skin poking through that very busy mushroom area was just very distracting to the piece. So adding a color similar to the mushrooms and darkening the green really helped that area come together. So this is what happens when you stare at a miniature you're unsatisfied with for too long. You get really kooky ideas, like adding grass to it. Decided to take some Warlord Gaines grass tufts and just tear them apart, take little sections, and glue them onto the troll. Uh, mainly, just did this to fill in the gaps around all the mushrooms that are just were really bugging me, and also to cover up that very blank area on the, uh, the very top of his back. And we're gluing it down with some artist's uh, matte gel medium, the same stuff I use to glue down gravel. And just placing them down, trimming them as needed. Uh, I tried not to go overboard. We could have definitely covered the whole thing with this grass. Uh, I actually added some uh, hair to him originally uh, around the top of his scalp. However, I felt that was going a little bit too far. However, I did leave on some straw colored grass in his ears. So he has hairy ears now. And there we are, there is our finished Dank Hold Trogoth. A very long project, mainly held up by my ability to not be able to decide on colors. Uh, really wanted to put some red in this project and I eventually added a little bit to the skin tone, uh, but I should have started with a much more limited color palette, it would have been easier to paint, but uh, we did end up with a very colorful troll in the end. So we played around with stippling with the makeup brush. I need a little bit more work on that. So also we did a heck of a lot with glazes, which are really easy to work with and very fun when you're using them in this style to get a real good transition colors over uh, an object and you don't have to be too clean with it, so you can be a little bit messy because it is very transparent. So if you accidentally goof up, it's, you're not gonna see it that well unless you goof up in that same area over and over again. Interesting thing to note, we did very little traditional overhead lighting, highlighting, and shading techniques here. Uh, much like the 
WizKids Red Dragon, this is just all color transitions uh, through the use of glazes, so uh, the play of light on the miniature is not really being taken account here because instead we went for a color variety in the skins instead. So uh, like I said, there's not a whole lot of highlighting or shading going on. A little bit in the mushrooms, but that's about it. All right, so that's it for our big troll. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, there will be one additional part. This video is getting a bit long, so the bronze cannon I decided to cut and put in its own video for archive purposes. Uh, but other than that, I'm running out of footage, so I gotta go. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Time for go to bed. <laughs>